Well, hello and welcome to the final video of this playlist. So in this video, we are basically going to use the view model provider factory class uh, that we created in the last video. And we'll use that to access our view model class in our input fragment and reserve fragment. So to do that, we need to uh, write few lines of code inside our main activity. So let's first do that. So open our main activity. And here, first of all, we'll need to take a late init variable, not a private variable, just a late init var. And this will be our view model variable and of type our view model class, which is result view model. And you need to import that as well. So yeah, uh, and here in our on create method, we'll take uh, our repository result repository variable, and we'll instantiate that as well. Result repository, and then we'll take the. Um, instance for the view model provider factory class and i'm gonna name the variable result view model provider factory equals to view model provider factory that we created uh, dot um, may no actually we just need to pass this uh, result repository repository that uh, because we have um result repository inside uh, our constructor of this class so we just need to pass that and then uh, we can now initialize our view model variable that we created uh, so view model equals to view model provider dot uh, um, not dot and inside the uh, the parenthesis we need to pass owner which will be this and we need to pass this result view model provider factory variable that we created and now dot get method and here we can pass result view model class uh, that we have um result view model yeah here it is dot double colon class dot java so now uh as we have a view uh view model initialized uh in the main activity we can use this view model inside our fragments as well so let's do that. So go to our first fragment, which is an input fragment. And here we'll need to uh, have a private latent var of view model. But this does not need to be public. So you just have, you can have it private because we are not accessing this out of this class. So uh, anyway, now uh, inside our on view created, we can uh, initialize this view model equals to activity as main activity because we have uh, initialized this view model inside main activity dot view model that we have initialized so that's it uh, now we can access this view model here so uh, we are inputting the data from the edit text of this class so we'll first of all need to okay we have already called sat on click listener so here I can call that uh, uh, a function inside our view model. So let's call view model dot get result. And here we're gonna uh, just write binding dot uh, ed your name dot to string. So this this will uh, ed your name dot text dot to string. This will uh, give the the first parameter of the API. And the other parameter will be binding dot ad partner name dot text dot to string. And this will give the second parameter. So that's it. We don't need to do anything else. And after calling this function, we'll move forward to the um, reserve fragment by this uh, line. So now let's go to reserve fragment. We need to call same thing here. We haven't done. Uh, binding as well so let's do that first so late in it for uh binding of fragment result binding and then binding equals to 
uh, fragment result binding dot bind and pass view inside that. And then we have to take late in it var a view model of type result view model. View model equals to activity as main activity dot view model. And then view model dot result live data because now we have already called the API and we have stored the response of API inside this live data. So we'll access result live data and we'll observe this and we need to pass lifecycle owner. So for the fragment lifecycle owner will be view lifecycle owner and we can directly call the anonymous function and I'm just going to name it uh, response. And then we can call this binding variable binding dot percentage dot text. Sorry, text equals to uh, response dot percentage plus a uh, percentage sign. Don't forget that because it will not give you in the result. So add that uh, separately. So now banding dot result dot text equals to response dot result so that's it i didn't think anything is left so we can try running our application so let's run it and see if it is working or not okay so our app is running successfully so let's try calling api so adam if and let's get the result it will take us to this fragment and the application crash. So let's see what happened. Let's go to Lockcat. Well, let's see if we have um, permission of the internet in the manifest. Okay, yeah, we don't have uh, internet permission, so we have to give permission as uses permission internet because without internet api will not be will not get called so now let's try again and see if it is working okay so let's write adam and eve and let's get the result again it will take us to this result fragment and that's it uh it's 67 percent and all the best is the result so <laughs> Anyway, this was a small project just to demonstrate how to use uh, MVVM architecture and how to use coroutines with uh, retrofit library and also navigation components, uh, how to use all of them inside an application and how to make an API call. Basically, the most important part of this uh, whole uh, playlist was to make an API call and use coroutine and MVVM architecture. So this was the simplest project. Uh, and uh, uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you, uh, you, you enjoyed making this small, uh, smallest application ever. So, but this was fun. Uh, it's always fun to learn new things. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next playlist. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, press that notification bell. So I have many uh, short projects in my mind that I'm going to create playlists of. So subscribe and press that notification bell so you get the not notification whenever I post a new video. So I'll see you guys in the next playlist. Uh